friends, Dr. Danny Lockwood here again from Terrain Wellness. We're here today to talk about another very hot topic, thyroid and anxiety. And I put up the question, could my thyroid be making me stressed? And the truth is, yes, it could. And other things, as we always know. Okay, so let's start off. First of all, I want to say that anxiety is a topic near and dear to my heart. The reason that I became a naturopathic physician was because I had debilitating anxiety. So there's lots of reasons why anxiety happens and there's lots of ways that we can investigate it. But today we're going to focus in on anxiety related to thyroid dysfunction. So as you know, there's two types of thyroid dysfunction. There's overactive thyroid called hyperthyroidism and there's underactive thyroid called hypothyroidism. Now, when these are connected to an actual autoimmune process, hyperthyroidism is called Graves disease. And hypothyroidism thyroidism is, cause, is called Hashimoto's. Okay, so now that we have that cleared up, let's talk about some of the tests you might want to run to find out if your thyroid is off. Okay, so I wrote them up here, in case you can't see them, I will say them out loud. We want to do a full thyroid panel. By the way, a full thyroid panel is not TSH. Go look on your thyroid that your primary care doctor did, and if they were a really good medical doctor, they may have ran TSH plus free T4. That is still not a full thyroid panel. And as you can see, I have written down what a full thyroid panel is, and this is what we run in our office, which actually gives us information about what your actual thyroid may or may not be doing. So we want to run free T3 and free T4. We want to do total T3 and total T4. We want to do reverse T3 and TSH, ah, and thyroid antibodies. Now, why is that? If we have an antibody to something, we might also have normal levels. We might have crazy levels and no antibodies. But if we have an antibody situation, we have an autoimmune process. And if it's an autoimmune process, we go deep into figuring out why the immune system is fighting something off so bad. For instance, doo -doo -doo -doo, my next thing down here, full Epstein-Barr panel. Epstein-Barr virus is very much connected many times to autoimmune thyroid. So it's something you want to have investigated. What's something else we might run? We might run a hormone panel. So actually te checking testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. And we love a company called Dutch. It's a dried urine test. So it actually will tell you where in that cycle things are going on if it's something coming from your liver, if you're missing B vitamins, it's a fantastic panel. So we run those and it includes something called cortisol awakening response. So this will actually measure your stress levels throughout the day because a lot of anxiety and thyroid come from stress levels coming from the adrenal glands. So CAR is a great way to figure out not only if your immune system is working, because it gives a signal, especially in autoimmune cases, that cortisol spike in the morning gives a signal to your immune system to respond and kill off autoimmune cells within the body. So this CAR is really, really important. And then it also measures your cortisol throughout the day to see what your stress is doing, to see if that's the reason that you might be having anxiety. Basic blood work, so that could be your cholesterol, uh, your blood count, something called a comprehensive metabolic panel. Um, we might look at your iron levels. We might look at something called homocysteine to, to see what your B vitamin status is. So we might run some of those kind of basic blood works. And then of course the full Epstein-Barr panel, unless we suspect it's some other thing like cytomegalovirus, or um, if you've had lots of, um, like herpes outbreaks, we might check for that. We might check for shingles, if you've had a bunch of shingles outbreaks. So all those can be run, but 
finding out the real underlying cause as to why the thyroid is going, going um, dysfunctioning is the key. So some of the symptoms that you might have, I'm going to step over here, are racing heart and palpitations. That definitely happens when I feel anxiety. So that is for sure. Fatigue, which fatigue can feel a lot like depression. And then when you're not in the depression, you feel anxious. So you can kind of fluctuate back and forth between that low mood and sort of racing mood. Weight loss or weight gain. So depending on what you have, a lot of, time, a lot of times with hyperthyroid, we'll see weight loss, like rapid weight loss. You can't keep your you know, thyroid in check or rapid weight gain when we have the, the issue with hypothyroidism. Mood swings or something else that you might, and, and more than usual, you know, like I said, you might have that up and down mood where you're really anxious and then you're really depressed or you can't get out of bed one day and you can't sleep the next day. So we will see that a lot. Hair loss, see our video on hair loss. We talked about that. We'll see that as a sign or symptom of thyroid, but it also, if you have anxiety, that still will cause inflammation in the body and you might see some hair loss with that. And then of course, blood sugar fluctuations. This is huge. One of the things that you wanna do when you're dealing with balancing your adrenal glands, getting your cortisol evened out, helping your hormones balance is getting your blood sugar right straight across. We don't want it too high. We don't want it too low. We want it nice and balanced. Why? Because on a physiological level, I'm gonna draw for you here, We'll see, let me see if I can write it over here. We'll see blood sugar looking more like this throughout the day. This is our carb crashing up and down or having alcohol and having it drop. This mimics a physiological anxious state because your body is like, oh my gosh, where's the food? And then all of a sudden it drops out. Oh my gosh, where's the food? Too much food, too much food. And it's just all day long up and down. So we want the blood sugar to mimic what we want our mood to be. We might go up a little bit, we might go down a, a little bit, but we're not having these peaks and valleys within our blood sugar. And that takes pressure off of a thyroid that's already being taxed. So that is a really, really big thing. So we work a lot on nutrition and again, getting that body nice and regulated and in a healthy rhythm. So this concludes our short video on thyroid and anxiety. This one is a huge topic. Leave your comments below and click the like button if you like the video. Let us know what else you want to hear about. We love teaching.